Good morning, everyone. Uh, what a great crowd. I was at the entrance when we, uh, when everyone's coming in, I got the chance to shake several hands, and it's just a great attendance here. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2018-2019 opening meeting for Faculty Senate and Classified Professional Senate. My name is Cliff Morris, and I'm this year's Faculty Senate President. I'm from the School of Construction, and I teach in a degree called Environmental and Safety Management. I've been a safety professional now over 20 years, probably more like 23 years now. Um, I've performed over 1,500 safety audits at public and private sector workplaces throughout Kansas and some in Nebraska as well. And one thing I can tell you without a doubt, accidents do happen and sometimes they happen to me. <laughs> um, it's been an interesting week. So I had a trip to immediate care on Sunday. They didn't stitch me, they glued me up and I'm doing a lot better today because uh, Monday I well, it still doesn't look good today, but Monday it was terrible. Um, before I get to my opening speech, I, I would like to recognize a few people and make some announcements. Uh, first, I'd like to ask the Faculty Senate, or introduce the Faculty Senate Executive Committee and officers. And as I mention your name, I'd like you to stand and remain standing. And after we're done, we're going to do a round of applause. So, Barb McClaskey, could you stand, please? Kyle Thompson, Kyle's not going to be here today, something came up. Chris Fogliazzo, Chris, are you out there? Out there. Um, Kristen Livingston, Kristen, I didn't, see. Kristen, there you are. Cole Shoemake, good to see you. Um, Andrea McConaughey, we practiced her last name yesterday. Um, Andrea, good to see you. Uh, she's the secretary this year. Our parliamentarian is Mark Johnson. Mark? Our, President-elect from the College of Business, Kevin Bracker. Kevin. And last year at this time, Amy gave me my one-year notice, so this is your one-year notice right now. Start practicing, you'll be up here next year. And last, I'd like to introduce our past president, Amy Height. Amy, thank you so much, and thank you for answering all the questions, the emails I had, I really appreciate it. Can we get a round of applause for these? At this time, I'd also like to uh, um, recognize departmental, departmental senators and senators at large. If you could please stand, I'd appreciate it. Departmental senators and senators at large. A round of applause, please. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank everyone that volunteered to be on committees. Um, I really appreciate your service. Pittsburgh State appreciates your service. It's a commitment, and thank you very much. Uh, letters went out this week. Not all of them, but most all letters went out this week, and I'd like to thank you for your service and volunteering to be on committees. Have a couple announcements to start things off. A couple things real quick. Rita Gerth, are you here by chance? I, she's right up here in the second row. Um, I want to make an announcement today from 3 to 4.30 at the... Uh, Bryant Student Health Center, there is an open house. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. I, I, I toured it last week. I had a wonderful tour, and I mentioned to her in the tour. My last time I was there was 2012 when I was a new faculty. But there's an open house today. Um, if anyone would like to more, have more information, Rita, I'm sure will be available after the fact. The next thing, uh, steak fry. Uh, our annual steak fry is coming up. Um, it's a wonderful thing. It's going to be September 25th at 530, same place it's always been over there on the east side of the stadium. Um, you can get tickets several places. You can buy them online, the Alumni Constituent Relations Office. You can even buy them right out there when we leave. So steak fries is a wonderful thing, and that's coming up. So with that, I'm going to get to my opening speech. Um, so one of the things that I do in the classes that I teach is I ask my students a lot of questions. And I do it a lot. So this is bigger than my normal classroom, but I'm still going to give it a shot. So. I'm going to ask some questions. i got three questions for everyone. Two of them you can answer right now. One of them you have, may have to look up. So just by a show of hands, how many people visited Pittsburgh State University when they were in high school, grade school, middle school? Wow. Oh, I better put my hand up too. Wow. How about this? How many people were amazed or had fun when they were here at Pittsburgh State? Yeah, isn't that a wonderful number? There's a lot of folks out here that came here. The last thing, excuse me, drop my glasses. Um, this is a question just for faculty members. 
What's your number? Not age, not cholesterol, not, no medical numbers, anything like that. What's your number? I'll talk about this a little bit more in a bit. Um, every year, we have many, many new potential students on campus. There's, there's students all over. We have a lot of events. We have a lot of them over in the College of Technology and just all over campus. Um, they're here for events and tours. A few years ago, back in the 1980s, I was one of those students. Um, my high school, I went to Labette County High School in Altamont, Kansas. Um, I was in a wood technology class. Uh, the wood tech class came over to visit the wood technology program at Pittsburgh State University. So I was one of those students too. So when I came back in the 1980s, this was the first time I ever came to Pittsburgh State University. Not only that, that was my first college tour. It was fun. I was amazed at what I saw. It was great. Um, I, I remember several things about that visit. Even the project they gave us, and I think I still have that over there at my parents' house someplace, squirreled away someplace. But it was fun. I, had, I was amazed. It's now 2018. And it's been about 30 years since I first stepped on campus, and gracious, time has flown by. Um, since I've been here, I realized something. Students are everything for us. So as I prepared for this speech, I wondered how many students I've had in all my classes. So thanks to Activity Insight, and by the way, I love Activity Insight. It's a great, great tool. And thanks to Activity Insight and a little math, if you combine all the students from all of my classes, it would fill this entire performance hall and some would be out in the hallway. Many of you could fill this room many times over. And I started in 2012. So back to question number three. What's your number of students? Uh, mine is 1,331. Many of these numbers are from repeat students, but with every one, there were, yeah, well, not that repeat. <laughs> They, they, multiple classes, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, I didn't really think about that when I wrote that line. <laughs> but um, every one of them, every time you have a student in your class, you have a chance to help them, teach them, and inspire them. That's what we are. We're educators. It's a great thing. Um, so let me give you another number. Two. A few years from now, hopefully my children will be some of your students. My son currently wants to major in Legos, <laughs> and he's really good at it. My daughter's undecided, but she loves to ride horses. Um, both majors, we currently don't have at Pittsburgh State, but maybe one day, please. <laughs> but anyway, um, my children have been on campus several times. My first time I was in high school, my children have been on campus several times. They love this place. They love it. Um, and in fact, actually, one of their favorite places to eat in Pittsburgh, Kansas is Gibson Dining Hall. <laughs> um, it's great. They have a milk machine and unlimited ice cream. So <laughs> they asked to go there quite a bit. So it's great. Uh, so in closing, I'd like to remind everyone what a privilege, and I mean that, what a privilege we have to be educators. And if you get a chance, look up your number. Once you find it, think about it. Think about all the difference you've made and, and all the students you've had the opportunity to teach. I hope everyone has a wonderful semester and year. And thank you very much. So, so at this time, I'd like to invite the president of the Unclassified Professional um, Senate to the podium, Lyndall Haverstick. Thank you, President Morris. Well, again, good morning and welcome. My name is Lyndall Haverstick, and I'm the University Architect and Director of Planning, Design, and Construction. This year, it's my honor and privilege to be serving as President of the Unclassified Professional Senate. And on behalf of the Senate, I'd like to thank Dr. Scott, the Administration, and the University Foundation for their support of our, of our organization. It has been over 30 years since I've had the opportunity to perform on stage at Pittsburgh State University. <laughs> and I wish that I could say that you were in for a real treat this morning. <laughs> what I can say is 
that the nervous and excited high school student who stood on stage or sat on stage in McRae Hall is just as nervous and excited today here many years later and awed to be on stage at the Bicknell Family Center for the Arts. It's, it's incredible. I would also say that the students who are visiting campus, who are, who are on campus today, are probably even yet more impressed, moved, excited, awed, and transformed by their experiences at Pittsburgh State University. Isn't it incredible how we all play a role in those successful experiences of current and even potential students, whether we are administration, faculty, university support staff, or unclassified professionals? The Unclassified Professional Senate, formerly known as the Unclassified Staff Senate, formed in 2011 to foster collegiality and communication among our unclassified personnel. The Senate serves as a liaison to the administration and the Kansas Board of Regents, and it is important to remember that our Senate is not a union or a bargaining unit, but rather is the channel for unclassified staff to have a voice and participate in shared governance on our campus, and also provide input on policies and procedures that impact our constituents. Our Senate members serve on various committees across campus and often partner with the Faculty Senate and the University Support Staff Senate. And thanks to funding from the PSU Foundation, the Unclassified Professional Senate has also been providing professional development scholarships. This year, the Unclassified Professional Senate represents 228 professional staff appointed to benefits eligible positions who are not already included in the Faculty Senate or who serve on the President's Council or the Provost's Leadership Council. These 228 professional staff members are academic chairs, healthcare professionals, accountants, directors, recruiters, development officers, coaches, coaches, programmers, researchers, counselors, area coordinators, to name a very few of the very many. Each spring, the Senate's constituents across campus have the opportunity to elect senators to two-year terms in this organization, currently comprising 23 senators. Thank you to all who have voted or served in the past, and an extra thank you to all who will be serving in the coming year. Serving with me on the Executive Council this year are past President Aaron Sullivan, President-elect Brad Stefanoni, Tre Treasurer Joe Furman, and Secretary Lisa Allen. At this time, I ask that all our current officers and our senators please stand and remain standing, please remain standing to be recognized. Regardless of the many professional roles these individuals serve on campus, they are also here to listen and inspire. Someone who listens and inspires is actually one of my favorite definitions of what an architect does. But the definition is broadly applicable to what the unclassified professionals and PSU community as a whole do every day. This morning, please make a mental note of the senator standing here Find out who represents you and your division. Share your thoughts, your concerns, your ideas, especially your good ideas, with any of us in person, on the phone, or by email. Better yet, attend a Senate meeting where you have the opportunity to get to know your colleagues a little bit better, learn about new campus efforts or concerns, and, well, make a difference. We meet the first Wednesday of the month from September through May, and our very first meeting is coming up September 5th at 2 p.m in the Meadowlark Room of the Overman Student Center. We welcome all unclassified professional staff to join our meetings as they can. And please also remember that these standing senators, they're ready to listen in a good way, not a creepy eavesdropping way. <laughs> they're, they're ready to listen to you, our outstanding colleagues. It is our sincerest hope that the school year is full of much listening and much inspiration. I thank you very much for the opportunity this morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to introduce the president of PSU KNEA, Dr. Grant Moss.
So it's National Tell a Joke Day, but the joke, the best joke has already been taken, you know, this idea of repeating students, so I'm not going to say any joke. So, like many of you, I've had many titles over the years. Some of them are official and others are not. Doctor, Professor, I have to say that one in Spanish, right? Um, Executive Secretary, Kansas World Language Association President, Bishop, I'll have to tell you about that one another time. Scoutmaster, I'll tell you about my 50 mile hike over the summer which was in a week, which is fun too. I'll tell you about that another time. I'm an Eagle Scout, but I'm also a husband, a dad, a brother, a son, and I'm Eagle. And now one of my titles is PSU, PSU KNA President. And like many of you, I've taken all my titles seriously. I do not simply take these positions because I want others to recognize me or because I need another line on my CV. I accept them because I believe in the basic principles for what the positions stand for. And I strive to do my best to reflect the ideas of those who I represent. And as an aside, I've noticed that I represent others best when I'm a volunteer. And it seems to take up a lot more of your time, doesn't it? My first purpose today is to ask you, my tenured and tenured earning colleagues, to consider or reconsider joining uh, being a big part of PSU k team. You have the talents, you have the expertise, you have the passion, and yes, you have the titles <laughs> that PSU k needs. PSU k needs you to step up and to volunteer. Now, when I came to Pittsburgh State University in 2010, like many of you, I was not sure if I should join PSU k I wanted to know if the benefits, like liability insurance, discounts on products, voice for fair governance, and more, would outweigh the cost, $34 per pay period for nine-month employees. And I was curious about union membership in a right-to-work state. I pondered about a white-collar union. I wondered if my idealistic views of, of unions would overcome my concerns about some members who would take advantage of the system. Now, this is typical. It's happening all over the place right now, right? And I worried about belligerent, outspoken voices who might control PSU k while others might quietly sit aside. However, like many of you, I'm a moderate. I just want the best for my family, and I'm trying to make ends meet. <laughs> and I want everyone to be treated fairly and equally. So with that, like many of you, I joined PSU k &E And joining PSU k &E was a great decision for me because I've been able to work with many of you who come from all walks of life and all different fields. We've been able to share many neat volunteer experiences together. And one shared experience I had in the past comes from my first job out of college. I worked at a private high school. It was a behavioral school. That's another issue for another time, too. Um, and one day, my good friend and senior colleague had had a horrible day. And he was up in arms about how we needed to bring about change. And he asked me to back him up at the meeting. And I'm like, sure. I said, yeah, I'll do that. But I knew he wasn't going to do anything. But you know, I'd had a good day that day, so I wasn't complaining. But he actually spoke up at the meeting. And he said, who's with me? Well, no one responded, not even Grant Moss. And I said I would, and I didn't. Yeah, I didn't live up to his expectations. And even when I apologized, we we're still friends, but our relationship had changed. And I decided I did not want that to happen to me ever again. I reconsidered and recommitted to my priorities. Now, most of us have not met others' expectations at one point or another. <laughs> most of us have made unwise decisions at one point or another. Most of us have had to recommit to our priorities at one point or another. And PSU KNEA is a volunteer organization that has made me better so that I exceed my expectations, so I make better and wiser decisions, and so I recommit to my priorities. So while I'm on that topic, let me turn to my second purpose today, to encourage Pittsburgh State University's administration to live up to our expectations, to make wise decisions for us, and to continually recommit to Pittsburgh State's priorities. President and President's Council, whew, you, you feel a lot of, you know, you got a lot of burdens, right? And we're counting on you to exceed our expectations. We're counting on to you to make wise decisions for us all. And we're counting on you to recommit to Pittsburgh State's priorities, right? I don't envy you guys at all. In fact, you have to make difficult choices that affect the entire campus and the community. And in some cases, you've acted very wisely. You deserve our thanks, our appreciation, and our support. And it's not said enough, I believe, so thank you. Now, I would imagine, you know, and there are other, other cases, right, where you've overextended yourselves financially. And I would imagine everyone in this room can empathize with that. I can. Because um, in my personal life, every once in a while, I uh, overextend myself financially. So here are some common things that I've heard about among faculty, university support staff, and administration over the years I think can help overcome this financial strain. 
So the first theme is administrative spending. So we're counting on you to exceed our expectations to curb administrative spending. During my time at Pittsburgh State University, that's nine years, administrative spending has increased by more than 50%, while spending on faculty salaries have re remained relatively flat, and so in the university support staff is relatively flat as well. So we should reconsider what kind of spending we do when we think about our regional demographics and the diminishing state funding, which is a real challenge, right? It will be challenging to, quote, provide transformational experiences for our students and the community, that comes from the PCU mission statement, right, when our business model is not quite transformational. My second thing that I hear in conversations is administrative hires. Now, we're counting on you to make wise decisions, and I know this is a challenge, as you limit administrative hires. And during my time at Pittsburgh State University, the total number of university support staff and teaching professionals has gone down, while the total number of administration has gone up. And you can see that on the Pitt State Human Resource webpage. And as you limit administration, you will turn the focus back on, quote, students seeking a quality education and the most talented faculty and staff. That comes from the PSU vision statement. If more and more of our budget continues to go to administrative hires, then higher tuition will push away students and lower salaries will push away talent and faculty. And that's a dilemma in um, higher education all across the country, right? Uh, the third theme is low salaries, right? That's what I hear often. And we're counting on you to recommit as you place faculty and staff salaries and, uh, and university support staff salaries at the top of your budget. And during my time at Pittsburgh State University, salary wage increases have been always seemed like an afterthought, right? They rarely appear on preliminary annual budgets, and if they do, they're last on the list. So a cost of living increase for faculty and university support staff of at least 3% should be the permanent first line budget on, uh, for permanent first line on their budget every year. And the idea isn't only transformational, I think it might even be cutting edge, or the first of its kind in the educational system in the United States. In fact, such an action will make contract negotiations go much smoother. Over the years, the, negotiate, the, bargaining, the negotiating teams and bargaining councils for PSU, KNEA, and for the administration have had to dedicate countless volunteer hours during the spring and summer months, and they participated in the negotiations, right, to arrive at these agreements. So now would be a good time to recognize those who, have, over the years, have negotiated for um, salaries here on behalf of the US. This year, we got, need to recognize, and you please stand, everybody, and stay standing. Camise, Siam, please stand. Laura Washburn, Amy Height, Tim Bailey, Mark Johnson. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. They deserve a round of applause. Now stay standing, stay standing. Because listen, there are many more. How many of you in this room have been on bargaining council or have been on the negotiating team? Stand up. There you go. Now, how many of you have served on PSU KNEA Executive Committee? Stand up. Now look around, everybody. They're, we're all contributing to this, right? So I, I think now we deserve, they deserve a round of applause, right? <laughs> now, <clears throat> excuse me. Thanks for your service. And you're not recognized enough because it's a volunteer service, right? So this year's no different, right, as far as the, the negotiations and how, how you've had to work all summer long. And you can see our from the table that we handed out uh, as you're coming in. I'll send out um, an email message that has that, con that, has that contained in it as well this afternoon. I think we can solve the problem, though, with all these meetings it, with that permanent 3% increase on that first line of the budget. And I've heard on many occasions, and I believe this is true, I don't believe it's empty rhetoric, that's the people that make Pittsburgh State University what it is. I mean, it makes it what it is, right? So as they say, let's put our money where our mouth is. Otherwise, Pittsburgh State University mission statements and the vision statements are inaccurate, which I don't think they are. And we are following the same old model as everyone else. So, we've, I began my remarks today by referring to all of the titles that we have in our lives. And next, I asked you, my tenured and tenured earning colleagues, to consider or reconsider being a big part of the volunteer PSU KNEA team, because you have the talents that, and the titles that Pittsburgh State needs, and PSU KNEA needs as well. I then shared an experience about my PSU KNEA journey and another story about how I learned to try to exceed others' expectations to make wise decisions and to continually recommit to my priorities. Later, I encourage the administration to do the same, and I offer three pieces of advice from what I've heard from on campus. Curb administrative spending, limit administrative hires, and have an annual permanent 3% increase is number one on the budget. Pittsburgh State University is a great place to work. It has its pros and its cons, like any other place of employment, but it's great. And I challenge all of us, 
every one of us in this room, myself included, to use our titles and our passions to make it even better. And I promise every single one of you that I will use, I want you to hold me to it as well, that I will use my talents, my expertise, my passion, and yes, my titles, particularly my title as PSU Kanye president, to try to live up to your expectations, to make wise choices, and to continually recommit to what is important to me and to Pittsburgh State. And I challenge all of you to do the same. Will you do it? I see some nodding. I know you will strengthen your students, your colleagues, and yourselves as you do. And I will do the same. Thank you very much. Good morning. Each year, I really look forward to this week. There already have been so many things that we've participated in, so many opportunities. Uh, but really, it's, it is, as um, uh, Dr. Moss stated, it's really about the people. And this is a demonstration of how we come together as a community to, one, celebrate uh, Pittsburgh State University and to celebrate uh, all of the great things that happen because of you, uh, regardless of your uh, position. A number of you are new to Pittsburgh State or are new to your position, uh, but most in this room are like me, you're continuing on. And again, I'll underscore that each of you is an essential part of what makes Pittsburgh State University a special place and a great institution, and I am incredibly proud to be the academic leader of such an amazing university. And I want to give all of us a round of applause. As a university family, we value our traditions, and even though many of these have changed over time, this morning, uh, we are participating in what is a tradition for this campus, and that is the opening meeting or the opening faculty meeting. Uh, though this meeting has been held in a number of locations over the years, remember when we crowded into the Crimson and Gold Ballroom and the chatter was just enormous? Uh, we are now in this amazing facility uh, and uh, uh, just enjoying comfortable seats, I'll say that. <laughs> Um, this serves as a reference point for the academic year, the beginning of the academic year, even though, as we know, the dynamics of higher education are changing and we're redefining beginnings, starts, ends, and so forth. But still, this is a reference point for us. And these are gatherings uh, that are part of being an element or an individual within a community. And today, as I mentioned before, we are going to recognize the collaboration that exists between faculty, staff, and administration. In the life of any institution, even the family, I would say, but in particular here, uh, a university, there are tradition, transitions. And many sitting here this morning have moved into new positions even within their same unit or department. Um, others who have served Pittsburgh State University in one area have taken on new challenges and deployed their skills uh, to new opportunities in a different division. I think what I'm getting around to saying is every one of us or every one of you uh, should be recognized for those changes and those advances. A number of faculty uh, start this year in a new rank and now hold tenure, which is an important uh, aspect of being a tenure-earning uh, faculty member. While we acknowledge these as important transitions in individual careers, today we're going to specifically introduce full-time new to PSU faculty and staff, as well as continuing PSU employees who have moved from university support staff to unclassified positions. 
and those faculty members who may be changing their status from part-time to full-time or temporary to tenure earnings. So that's a lot of categories there, uh, but nonetheless does not represent everyone who made a transition this year. While this takes a little bit of time, it's important uh, it's an important tradition of Pittsburgh State University to introduce these new individuals to the campus. It's not something that we simply get through. Uh, rather, it's a ritual that serves to acknowledge individuals and strengthens the bonds between us. So my primary role today is to make sure this happens uh, and that we aren't here at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, but that we give due recognition to these individuals. So this is how we're going to do it. Some of you have been through this before, so you probably could, uh, although we've altered it a little bit, uh, you could uh, describe the drill to everyone else. Uh, names of those who are being introduced will be displayed on the screen behind me as we go through this process. And an expanded list is available uh, behind Gus, and uh, that will contain, that listing will contain some more basic information. Uh, if you uh, recognize someone or you hear someone's name and you think, I really want to know more about what, where they came from and the experiences they've had, that's briefly summarized on this form uh, behind Gus. So I'd encourage you to uh, go there for more information. Today we are asking, we're doing it a little bit differently, we're going to ask the vice presidents to introduce these individuals from within their division, and we'll ask for the house lights to come up at some point so that we can actually turn around and see people because I would guess they're distributed all across uh, uh, the hall today. Uh, in addition to introducing the individuals in my division of academic affairs, I also have the honor of recognizing those who are part of the president's division. So I'll be saying a lot more names than I usually uh, say, uh, and I hope I can pronounce them correctly and, and uh, do uh, an appropriate job. We're going to ask these new personnel to stand in order to be recognized, and again, when the lights come up, we'll be able to see them. And last, and perhaps the most difficult instruction that I give every year, and oh, by the way, I've even, I've even offended this rule, uh, this instruction, and that is that even though everyone deserves individual applause, we truly would be here a long time if we cheered them and applauded them as they stand up. So we're going to do that by division. So when I complete introducing uh, new individuals, in the president's division, we'll stop and, and applaud, and then we'll move forward that way. How does that sound? Well, this isn't a democratic decision. We're just going to go with it, OK? <laughs> so let's begin. And if we can have the house lights uh, come up so we can see people around. Again, for the uh, president's division, the president's office from Information Technology Services, uh, I'm going to introduce Josh. Holcomb, who is a software developer, too. Oh, I think way in the back. <laughs> and then Colby Wachinski is also a software developer, too. Okay, thank you. Intercollegiate athletics. Lacey Anderson is the new assistant to the athletic director. Way in the back. Amanda David is our new head women's basketball coach. Bob Fornelli is our new head baseball coach. Josh Latimer is the assistant football coach. Lance Moser, Assistant Athletic Director for External Engagement. Tim Paget, Associate Athletic Director for Financial Operations. Addie Roller, Assistant Women's Basketball Coach. 
Casey Taylor, assistant softball coach. And Keiston Terry, assistant football coach. Okay, the back. University Strategic Initiatives, Mary Louise Widmer uh, is the new administrative coordinator. Under Enterprise PSU, Mindy Lee is our new small business counselor up front. And then under the Kansas Polymer Research Center, Vivek Sharma, a new research associate. Okay, that completes the President's Office uh, Division. <laughs> Welcome. So academic affairs. In the College of Arts and Sciences, English and Modern Languages, Mary Larson is a new, new instructor. I know she's been in new faculty orientation, so forgive me if I can't see you um, out in the seating. In military science, we have a new professor of military science, Major Charles Costello, up front, and uh, Sergeant First Class Daniel Hanakahi is not able to be with us, uh, but First Lieutenant Bryce Johnson is with us today. In music, a new assistant professor, Andrew Chybowski. Okay. Physics, Angeline Hobson, new instructor. Then in the Kels College of Business, and we've had some reorganization in the College of Business, so we now, rather than having departments, we have the Kels Undergraduate School of Business and the Kels Graduate School of Business. So within the Kels Undergraduate School of Business, Jennifer Shoemake is a new instructor of accounting. Welcome. Then in the College of Education, in Health, Human Performance, and Recreation, Allison Berry is a new assistant professor and I think achieved her PhD just pretty recently. Congratulations. And David Bradley, our new assistant professor in psychology and counseling, uh, you are likely in the same condition of just completing that doctorate over here. Congratulations. In the College of Technology, Automotive Technology, Chauncey Pennington has moved to a tenure earning position. Did I see him stand up way in the back? Uh, in construction, Chris Pross is coming to us from industry to serve as an assistant professor. Right over here. Okay. Then in enrollment management and student success, Carrie Hansen is our new coordinator of the Center of Student Accommodations. In the middle. Admission, we have a new director, Scott Donaldson. Right here. And then two new regional coordinators. And you understand, when I say new, these are not new positions. These are fills of uh, open positions. So Brandis Brenner is a new regional recruiter in the uh, western part of the state. And Ashlyn Dowell is a regional uh, recruiter uh, up on the Missouri side of uh, the Kansas City area. International programs and services, Shama Ali joined us actually last January uh, as the di new director up there of uh, international programs and services. And in the registrar's office, Angie Davidson is now the Assistant Registrar for Degree Certification. Uh, not a new face, but moving to um, uh, universal U UPS position and uh, taking the leadership for that area. 
Okay, so we're at the end of the Academic Affairs Division, so let's applaud all of these new <laughs> individuals. And I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Doug Ball, the CFO and Vice President for Administration and Finance, and he will be introducing new individuals in his division. Thank you, Dr. Olson, and it's great to be here. And today we get to recognize four employees in the Administration and Finance Division. Uh, the first is Amberly Downs. Amberly is in our, is in our business office team. Uh, the next is Taylor Gravitt. Taylor is in our human resources team. Uh, the third is Megan Whitney. Megan is in our payroll team. And finally, Barbara Jemison. Barbara is in our procurement team, our purchasing team. So thank you, and let's recognize these four. <laughs> to introduce new um, uh, employees in Student Life is our Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Steve Irwin. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to campus. Um, we have seven uh, folks joining us. Um, a technical and client services coordinator in this wonderful facility, uh, Nicole Corcoran. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> uh, in campus recreation, we welcome Nathan Brungard, aquatics coordinator, Nathan. And Kirsten Luptak, our coordinator of group fitness and personal training. In the Student Health Center, uh, through a partnership with the Crisis Resource Center and uh, Safe House, we welcome Stephanie Spitz. Uh, Stephanie is our Victims Advocate Coordinator, our Violence Prevention Coordinator. I don't know if Stephanie's here today, uh, but she's serving that student population. Uh, in the Student Center, we welcome Anna Stark. She's our Program Coordinator for Campus Activities. She works with Greek Life, and unfortunately, I don't think she's here today because of uh, Sorority Rush. And then University Housing, we welcome Allison Willette as our Assistant Director. And finally, in University Police and Parking Services, our new director, uh, Stuart Height. Stuart. I appreciate uh, President Morris' um, endorsement of Gibson Dining Hall. Uh, <laughs> we'd always welcome you over there, and, and many of us visit there. But also, this morning, we have three new uh, formats opening in the uh, Gorilla Crossing, and so I'm sure you'll be uh, thirsty and hungry afterwards, and you'd like to try those. So welcome, everyone. <laughs> And to introduce uh, new individuals uh, within University Advancement is our Vice President for University Advancement, uh, Ms. Kathleen Flannery. Good morning and welcome and welcome back. We have several new faces uh, since our last uh, meeting uh, this time last year to uh, Alumni and Constituent Relations, our new Assistant Director, Danielle Driscoll. In Career Services, our Employer Relations Coordinator, Heather Bush here somewhere, there she is. Uh, in development, our Assistant Director of Annual Giving, Jared Zamowski. And in University Marketing and Communication, our Director of Digital Communication, Lena Pinkston. Please help me welcome them. Thank you and welcome again. I'm going to circle back around to, oh, could we leave the lights up one more minute, second, 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, I want to circle back to something I said uh, at the beginning of my comments, and that is that any given year, we have a myriad of individuals who undergo some type of transition, whether it is promotion or tenure for faculty, or relocating into a, a new office, or whatever it might be, as well as all of these uh, new individuals who've joined uh, Pittsburgh State University. So I'm gonna ask all of those who fit into that category to stand, and then we're going to give us all another round of applause. Would you stand, please? Humor me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Olson. Um, and, I, and again, I'd like to welcome all the new faculty and staff. This truly is a wonderful, wonderful place to work. At this time, 
It's my honor to introduce the president of Pittsburgh State University, Dr. Stephen Scott. All right. Good morning. Wow, what a great turnout. This is amazing. Uh, great job, guys and one gal, getting us off to a great start. It does seem like whoever we put at the podium, they just do a tremendous job connecting their own personal experiences to what it means to be at Pittsburgh State University. Uh, Grant, you did out in the hall say you weren't going to throw me under the bus. <laughs> and there for a moment, I thought one of Jim Johnson's athletic buses was firing up in the parking lot. <laughs> but maybe I was just getting some feedback on this earpiece, I don't know. But anyway, this is one of those days where we have this thought, we are all pulling together. We're all working together to make things work. And I, and I do appreciate your comments, I really do. Dr. Olson, appreciate the way you streamlined our introductions. Uh, we'll just keep working on that, won't we? It's, it's, a, it's an interesting tradition at Pittsburgh State University. It is a fun tradition, though, certainly as well. You know, a lot of guys on the stage today, did you notice that? Did you notice that? I kind of noticed that. So what did that look like last year? <laughs> wow, looked different last year, didn't it? So I just want everybody to know, it's a pretty good balance around here. I think we've got some pretty good balance, and I'm very proud of that, actually. So I've got a number of things I want to talk to you about, and I know you've got uh, meetings to get on to and other things that you want to get involved in. I understand that. But I do want to talk to you about just a couple of things. Some of them are not so positive, and then some of them are extremely positive. And of course, I'm going to get the negative ones out of the way right off the bat. That's okay with everybody. So here's a slide that we just cannot ignore, and that is where our enrollment has been and where our enrollment is going. And I, do, I just love the fact that Scott Donaldson and Howard Smith and folks over enrollment management, they handed out t-shirts today that basically would identify every single one of us as an admissions officer. I think Cliff made the comment that we're all educators, and I'd say every single person in this room, every single person who works on this campus is an educator. We are all teachers. We're all about building a great environment for learning to occur or actually delivering that, that instruction. So, but we also have to all be about admissions. We all ought to be ambassadors for Pittsburgh State University because this is a very troubling line that we've seen. Now, are we alone? If you look across the higher education landscape, we're absolutely not alone. We're seeing a lot of pressure across the country with international enrollments, with even uh, first-generation enrollments, transfer enrollments. There's just a lot of pressure on the enrollment side. Now, we think we're putting a team in place in admissions to address that but we need the help of every single person in this room, every single person on this campus, and we need the help of the community as well to move this number in the right direction. But it has serious implications for us. And those implications are financial, because a number of years ago, the state of Kansas decided that they would allow us to keep our tuition on campus. Well, when you're growing and you're generating a lot of tuition, that's a good thing. When you're pulling back and sagging a little bit on, on enrollments, then you're really losing ground on the financial side, and it has immediate impact. So you, can, you all have heard over the last year or two, we've really communicated with the campus on a regular basis what kind of pressures this putting, is putting on us. And they're clear. And look what's happened to that yellow line. Look what we've done with tuition. Nobody in here feels good about what we've done with tuition. We've raised it to, to ensure the quality of instruction is at a level we're proud of and what our students deserve and expect. But look at that red line. That's the state of Kansas allocation to Pittsburgh State University. If Kathleen Sanders saw that on EKG, what would you think? That's flatline, right? That's flatline territory. You're running for the defib defibrillator, right? So that's really been a problem for us. I mean, that has created enormous challenges for this campus, particularly when you add to that the enrollment situation. So you've got tuition pressures. You, now we have downward pressure on tuition increases. It's just a fact. We have pressures on the enrollment side, and the state is pulling back in their investment in higher education. Got a little bit of money back this year, but very minor, about $640,000 all. It's what we got back from a million dollar cut a couple of years ago. So if that weren't enough, by the way, this gets more positive here in a minute. Look at these, look at these headlines, though. You talk about troubling. Every one of us gets up every day and comes to this campus believing what we do has value. I believe that. 
there is commitment on this campus. There's commitment in the, in the voices and the comments of every single person that preceded me on the stage. They're committed to this. They believe in this. They believe it makes a difference for people. Higher education does. It gives people a step up. It gives people a launch pad into great careers and great lives. It makes a difference in their own personal life as well, college degrees do. But look at that. The American public does not believe in us. They do not support us. So when you look at Topeka and you say, well, those legislators aren't sending us money, they're reflecting a broader view of higher education. So what does that tell us? We've got some work to do. Do our employers believe we're doing a good job? Lights out, they do. I had an employer call me this week and say, how can I get more of your graduates? Not less. Not, he wasn't tell, she wasn't telling me, you need to do better. She said, I'll take every single one of your graduates you can prepare. And how do I get more of them? So our employers get it. Our donors get it. We're raising 10 to $12 million a year. Our donors are voting in support of us. But there's this general sense in American society right now that we're headed the wrong direction and we're moving the country in the wrong direction. I would say that applies to some institutions of higher education. I would vehemently disagree that that applies to Pittsburgh State University. But we've got some ambassador work to do. We need to help people understand what we're doing and what we're accomplishing and why it's good, not just for this community or this region, but why it's good for America. I believe that. I believe it's good for the world. So look at the, I saw this cartoon the other day. Kind of, kind of points out where we are. Serious, serious headwinds. And sometimes you get up in the morning and you probably think that. And, and some of you reach out to the administrators on campus and you'll say things like, and, and one of you said this a minute ago, I think Grant said it, don't envy you your job because the challenges and the headwinds are pretty severe. But they're not just severe in Russ Hall. They're severe throughout the campus. And there's a recognition of that. We get that. So what do we do? All we know is we put our head down and keep working, trying to figure it out every day, and try to build a great path for this institution. But that's important to note that that's what we're facing. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So how do you, how do you manage your way through this? I don't think there's, in my mind, there's only one way to manage your way through this. One is you've got to keep your eye on the ball. But you also have to have a good plan. And, and some of the folks referenced the plan. You've got to have strategies. You've got to have priorities. And they have to be clear. And people have to accept them and buy into them. You know, our university architect, Lendl, spoke a few minutes ago, and he used the term transformational. He gets that. He knows that that's what we're about. Why would the university architect care about that? Because he understands that's the mission of this institution. And I believe we are true to that mission. So the planning group has done a great job of building off of our mission statement of creating transformational experiences for our students and our community. And I'll give you some great examples of that here in just a minute. But the planning group has done, I think, amazing work over the last few years, particularly this last year. There you go. The Strategic Planning Council is led by Dr. Olson. They meet monthly, and they've really created some great examples of accomplishments. And just going to share those. I'm not going to go over every one with you today. But I just want to thank the members of that group for the work that they're doing. Some of this is kind of ty it, it's, uh, tiring and it's tedious, but it's extremely important that we have our priorities set and our direction set and we buy in to those things. So I also would say they've got some nice examples of things that we've really moved forward on. And Dr. Olson, I don't know if there's a more important initiative on this campus than the review and revision of general education. We've had tremendous leadership by the faculty in that space. It's really important for the, the future of our academic program. Great work has gone on in that, but that all gets connected to our planning work. In addition, we've identified key performance indexes the Strategic Planning Council has. They, they vary from research interests all the way to our financial viability, which we're actually making some good progress on but some specific metrics that we feel like we need to measure. And then they also picked up, through all the planning efforts that went on through the campus, they picked up, what are the major themes? What do we need to focus on? We know we need to focus on salaries. Last year, the 2.5% increase by the state that was done for some employees but not for others, it wasn't a disaster, because if you got the raise, it was a good thing. But it was a problem, and it needs to be fixed, and we intend to address that. So we know there's salary pressures, and we want to do something to help on the salary side, and we will make those changes. 
We've done reorganizations. We have fewer department chairs. We have department chairs that are not full-time, that used to be full-time. Those folks have made some serious sacrifices, and so with our faculty within those units. We're also putting money into some new revenue generating opportunities. So we're not just sitting back, we're not just gonna do the same thing. So as we think about <clears throat> this day and the kinds of the time I have to talk to you, I know I have a limited amount of time. I watched one of my colleagues give his opening meeting speech. It was an hour and four minutes long. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. I won't do that. So, so I get a lot of advice of what I should talk about. And even the folks from the health center lobbied to get an announcement in. Cliff, you, got, you took care of that for me. Good job. But I get all kinds of advice on what I should cover and what I should show on the screen, even down to Howard Smith's grand grandkids. <laughs> Did you see them on campus the other day? They were running Howard around. They're all different places. They're all decked out in Pitt State gear, Pitt State glasses, Pitt State shirts, Pitt State hats. They looked awesome. So I gotta tell you though, Oak Howard just had a new one, didn't you? Number seven. <laughs> right, number seven, I just heard that. And uh, pretty cool. But you know, if you're a grandpa or papa and somebody else shows their pictures, then hey, I gotta show mine. <laughs> That's Bo. We call Bo, Bo Dozer for a reason. And you know, you look at that picture, I looked at that and I thought, That's, that looks familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> that really looks familiar to me. Huh, don't you think there's a resemblance there? <laughs> I don't know. We have two other grandkids, they're not getting on the screen, so I'm not sure how that's all gonna work out. But we have a lot of fun with Bo, and uh, man, what a joy grandkids are, right? They're a lot more fun than your own kids, by the way. Just, it just kind of works out that way. So anyway, I've got a limited amount of time to talk about things, so I want to talk about some things that are really at the strategic level, high level, that everybody ought to be concerned about, and here's one of them. IT security. You go, oh my gosh, can he, why would he talk about that? Because we had a legislative post-audit review this last year, and they found some really good things. They did. But they also found boxes around people's desks where it said, shred and the paper was yellow, it had been in the box so long. Or sticky notes with passwords stuck around like you see in the cartoon there. So we don't have any cho choice at all, folks. We've gotta do some things on the IT security side that some of you might find unpleasant. So I'm just telling you, that's out there, and we would ask your cooperation and remind you that it's important that we take care of the data that we have, that we're good stewards of the data we have, and that we act appropriately. Because, you know, you just, it just hypothetically, if, you know, if the right or the wrong person were hacked, maybe it could affect the outcome of an election. <laughs> so is it important? It is important. So we'd ask for your cooperation on that. And this, this is for Angela, this part. Angela, nearest, she loves numbers. So I just thought of the number of million the other day, and here's four things about one million. One is Benny over in the Student Health Rec Center, he tells me that they've reached 1,200,000 visitors. Can you believe that? To the health center, or the rec center, sorry, the rec center. The cardio machines this fall, will, all of the, the mileage together will exceed a million. That's pretty cool. Now, Paul Grimes likes a million because recently, I'm not gonna tell you the name, but we got a million dollar commitment for the building project for the business college. Million dollars. That's pretty cool. And then, you're not gonna believe this. You know what that is? That's the rehearsal hall in this building. It's this cube over here. It's almost a million dollars to finish that building. To finish this building, to finish that space, it's almost a million dollars. Well, guess what happened yesterday? Did you see it? You received it? We got the final pledge to get that done. So we've already, it's really good news. It is good news. So, so we're really excited about that. That's gonna allow the practice to occur there. That'll allow music to move out of Kells. That'll allow Kells to have a little less music. You guys like the arts, you like music, right? But maybe a little less would be good for instruction. 
but uh, Susan Marchant and her group, they'll be able to have access to a state-of-the-art performance or practice venue that's really going to be special. So Joe Furman will be completely happy. Everything's done in the building, and he'll have no additional requests. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Joe's, up, Joe's looking at a catalog back there right now. <laughs> but that's, that is good news for us, I'm just telling you. That's good news. So here's another. That's an odd-looking set of numbers. What is that? I don't have my notes. I think that's, um, oh, that's election day. Oh my gosh. Sean, is there an election on November 6th? We have three candidates for governor. We will never tell you how to vote, but boy, we need to tell you to vote. And, and the reason is, in the primary on the Republican side, around 300 votes decided it. Around 300 votes decided it. We need everybody to be engaged and really understand where the candidates are, who wants to move education forward, who's looking for reduction of tax revenue, wh whatever, their, whatever their views are, we really need you to participate in that process because it has a direct impact on that earlier slide and that red line. It's really an important year to be engaged in the political process. So how about this number? These folks over here recognize this number. This is my blood pressure the other day. So I went over and Tess and Veronica took my blood pressure because Rita wasn't there and Rita's not supposed to take my blood pressure because it's always like sky high when Rita takes it. So uh, and the, I don't understand that really. She's always talking about things and wired. So, so he took it four times. Finally he said, you know, maybe if you uncross your legs that will help. And he said, if you'd stop talking about health quest, that will help too. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, it's probably true. I probably need to back off of that and that crazy web page that I'm still working on. So, but it is a shout out to the health center. You know, I thought it was gonna die. I had strep throat. Can you die from that? <laughs> and I went over and they quickly diagnosed that and gave me some medication. They told me to go home and Jamie concurred. And I went home and I was back at work the next day. So when you have those, you know, medical needs, healthcare needs, some of you aren't thinking about the health clinic, would love for you to think about them. They just, they want to take care of us, don't you? You want to, I know you do. And they're just great at it, and they're just super. So keep that in mind. They do a lot more than blood pressure, but it was kind of fun to go over and see them the other day and, and then to share this number with you. Uh, before I share, look at this number, I heard this number today, 60. I should have put this on here. Madonna is 60 today. Can you believe that? Madonna, how did that happen? I remember when she was this tall. <laughs> well, maybe I don't. But... This number, this is, this is kind of painful, kind of not, kind of proud of it. I've been here 30 years. August 18th. <laughs> what a deal. I can still remember moving into my office in 301 Hughes Hall and just thinking this is going to be awesome for a couple of years and then I'd you know, go do something else. I don't know why I thought that, but I really thought that. But 30 years later, here we are. Uh, this building didn't exist and a lot of other things didn't exist and this place has changed a lot over time But the culture certainly has stayed very very healthy and very similar So then but I've been here th 30 years. There's a guy in here who has been here 40 years And his name is Bob Keeley. Anybody know Bob Keeley? <laughs> yeah So He he is a great musician, but he's an awful golfer Let's, let's just get, is that true, Bob? I don't even know. I, don't know. I just made that up. Nye, are you serious? Wow, that's pretty good. That's awesome, really. So, uh, but Bob was willing to sit down and, and do an interview and, uh, with Jacob. And, and I think he makes some really good points that I want to stress here in a minute. So let's watch uh, this set of comments from Bob Keeley. When I got here, uh, like so many of my colleagues, well, I'll be here three or four years and then I'll take a job someplace else. But you know, it's such a nice environment. Uh, you know, my first impression turned out to be correct. The faculty, not just in the music department, but across campus were really nice. But the students have been great all the way through the years and really positive. And it's, it's, you know, it's one of these things where, why leave? You have the obvious with the students, and that is the major goal, and that's the most important thing of getting the students 
out there, moving them forward, giving them the tools to be successful in their discipline, in their field, but also as citizens. And, and sometimes that might not be a citizen of the United States, it might be a foreign student here. But having the Bicknell Center bring in, in something like Cinderella on a Broadway show, I mean, you have to go to Kansas City to do that. No, you can do that in Pittsburgh. And looking at some of our English professors and the writings that they've done, the poetry that they've done, and our chemistry professors and the publications they've had, our polymer center and what they've done. I mean, just, just go right down the line. Those are things that we don't necessarily see, but it's an important part of our mission, an important part of what we do at the university. Bob, thanks for doing that. <laughs> you know, I thought in rehearsal there was another piece of that. Did you take that out? But the students have been great all the way through the years, and, and the growth, the administration, uh, particularly with Dr. Scott right now, really positive. <laughs> and the growth, the administration, uh, particularly with Dr. Scott right now. Oh particularly gosh. with Dr. Scott right now. With oh Dr. Scott right gosh. now. Oh my that's pretty nice. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate that shout. Let's have the lights come up. And uh, have the lights, anybody on the light crew? There you go, where's Bob? Bob, thank you very much, that was fun. Thanks. You know, it is okay to compliment someone, and uh, particularly me, because then I can replay it over and over, and I can watch it at home, and we've got it on DVD, and we actually have it on a little USB drive. But Bob, thank you. You know, you know Bob's point, this is really an important one, because we hire people to be experts within a specific area. We hire someone to, to know a lot about a particular area of chemistry, like polymer chemistry, or someone who works in the business office that has a very unique set of skills that they apply to their work. But then on a day like this, you want to do what, what Bob just talked about, and that is to look across the campus and realize there's so many good things going on everywhere. And when you have this broader view of the campus and you kind of back up from, there's Bob Shore, you know, in a lab, hands-on, can't really tell Bob from the students. And then you back off, you think about this whole campus, what does this look like? And you've just got those, those just individual efforts and, and success and accomplishments happening all over this campus. And I think it's neat, and, and maybe it takes being here 30 years or 40 years to really see that and have a sense of that, but I think that's an important thing to think about today. So you just think about our, our, uh, our plan. We say that we have this tagline, a pathway to prominence. So you think all these headwinds he's talked about and financial challenges and some of the challenges that were alluded to earlier, are we making any progress? You saw what the Strategic Planning Council said, they said they're starting to check some things off and we are making progress and laying out some things that we've got to do in the future to be successful. What I thought I'd do is just take a few minutes, and this will be pretty quick, to look at what does prominence mean? How do you know if you get there or not? And I think you'll agree with me, these are pretty good examples, but these are just samples. Because as Dr. Olson said, if we looked at all of them, we'd be here till one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, but I want to give you a sample. Well, look at this image. When HLC sent out a notice to ask for, it was a request for proposals or for presentations to their, their huge national meeting, look who's on the cover, Jan Smith. I've watched Jan Smith present at HLC to a room of 700 people, wall to wall, sitting around, standing around, over a filled room, it's amazing. She is an expert on accreditation. So I thought that's pretty cool, and then it turns out the guy on the right is a 1977 graduate of uh, Pittsburgh State University, of all things. Dr. Olson sent me this number the other day. She said, uh, if you look at the last year, I think through Activity Insight, all of our faculty, the number of papers, presentations, state, regional, national level, monographs, books, book titles, book chapters, and so on, our faculty produced 616 of those items in a 12-month period. That's pretty amazing. We only have 200 and some faculty. We have less than 300 faculty, really, that would contribute to that. Pretty amazing number. I'd say that's prominence. Then look at these folks. They look pretty happy. So Becky Brannick, she gets recognized at the state to be inducted into a state 
Hall of Fame. Susan Nell gets appointed to a national committee in reading. And our own Paul Grimes ends up in Jakarta, looking kind of interesting there. <laughs> but good, very traditional, you know, local custom, that's nice. But look at that, state, national, international recognition of our faculty. Pretty cool. That's a great picture, Jamie Oliver. I think Jamie just finished his third solo art show in New York City. And if you want to see some of his work, obviously he's got it over there at his, in his building in Porter. It's also in the Crossland House. That's a great photo, by the way. And Amanda Minton. So his prominence can be national, it can be international, it can also be in Crawford County. Look what Amanda's done with the Crawford County Historical Museum. She has just taken that and built a team and really revitalized it. It's really a neat thing. It's good for this community. It's good for this region. And Virginia Ryder is the last person in this room who wants to have her photo up here. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you she is. But what a treat it was for Pawan and Dr. Olson, myself, and, and Mary Carroll to go to Kansas City and see her receive an award from Kay Embry for mentoring. And if there's a better mentor in America, I'm not sure where, where you would find that person, but Dr. Ryder, congratulations on a tremendous honor. And how about this group? This is quite a group, led by Michael Davidson. They're putting together all the economic data for the, what do we call it, the micropolitan area. And that data is being produced with the help of Janet and David Oldham and Shipper there. A great interdisciplinary team that's putting that data together. And it's not just sitting in the doctor's offices and different places. It's being utilized by planners, by Sean's team and by the city. It's really a neat thing. What's that? Holy cow, I thought we took that out. That's Doug Whitten. He's a, what do you call that, roller derby? His name is Weaselbub or something like that. <laughs> and when he's not competing, he's a coach. He coaches a women's team in roller derby. He's a tough guy. No wonder he can take 100 band students, or 180 probably marching band kids out here and get them all in shape. He can do, he does this on the weekend pretty impressive. You know, it's not just our faculty that do these things, too. I mean, you think about what, uh, what our staff does. Our IT group was, was recognized by Educause, and Educause is the group in, in higher education IT work, and they recognized our, our team for doing things in the cloud and the kind of expertise they've gained through the, pro through the uh, processes they've taken to the cloud. Pretty cool thing. And, of course, Michelle Sexton, she's out there I guess she's selling Oracle Cloud products. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have, we're going to look in to see if she needs to file a 1099. Uh, but Michelle and Debbie Amershack, they've spoken at national conferences because we had such a good experience with the Oracle Cloud. I know some of you say, well, it didn't feel good to me. But that is, <laughs> that is an amazingly complex project that we did with, I'd say, some minimal pain, given what that could have been as we left that old legacy system. So Michelle's been out there in front. And then, of course, in athletics, Jim Johnson, he's the head of all Division II athletic directors from across the country. There's over 300 of them, and he's the leader of that group. He's on a national group right now that's doing the search to replace one of the high-level executives at the NCAA. And because of Jim's connections, of course, I spent a little bit of time uh, working with the NCAA and currently on their strategic planning group. Uh, and Dwayne Whitbeck. Nice image of Dwayne out in front of his building. He was the president of his national association. Isn't that amazing? Pittsburgh State University doing this. And this is Jody Neef receiving a check from uh, Ford Motor Company to do some research. I would describe it as about polymers and electrostatic situations with fuel tanks. I'd describe that in more detail, but you guys wouldn't understand it. <laughs> and Jody's probably sitting there right now thinking, I can't believe he just put that sentence together and it doesn't make any sense at all. But nonetheless, Ford's a pretty big company, and they came to Pittsburgh, Kansas, to talk about researching this. That's a pretty cool thing. And then there's this thing, this tobacco-free campus concept that Rita and Jim Trippett led a number of years ago and put into place, and you think, well, that's several years ago. But here's the deal. KU and K-State just put it in July 1st of this year. And when they wrote the articles about it, guess what they did? They cited Pittsburgh State as the first institution to take that on. That's a pretty cool thing. We like it when KU and K-State look to Pittsburgh State University to see what to do next. 
We, we know there's some other institutions that look to us and kind of copy us, but we, we really, I'm not going to mention the name, but we really, we really think it's cool when KU and K-State do. So congratulations to the folks that led that effort. And then this building, is, this building, and talk about prominence, it's been on the cover of a number of architectural magazines and business officers' magazines and just the, the events we're bringing to the stage. You know, just think Bill Clinton's been here, Mitt Romney's been here, Laura Bush has been here, October 23rd. Oh, I can't say who's going to be here yet, can I? Women in government's going to bring, bring a national figure to this stage on October 23rd. Put that on your calendar. And sometime in April, we're thinking that H. Lee Scott series will resume and we'll have a fantastic speaker. So we're doing some pretty cool things in this space in the solo and chamber series. Didn't even mention them, but they've always had international level uh, performers in, in McRae historically, and they do about six events a year. So not only what's going on here, but what's going on back there. And then Sean insisted I show you one picture of him. <laughs> and it's a pretty good picture, really, if you think about it. So this is an award from the International Town Gown Association to Jay Byers and Sean, and it was for their work for the partnership that's been developed between the city of Pittsburgh and U Pittsburgh State University. And that was really just the organizational elements of that. So then you fast forward to Block 22, and uh, Steve, is it going to be done? <sighs> Anybody good at painting? <laughs> Putting in door locks, hanging access points, cleaning. We got a whole bunch of folks down there right now cleaning. I think we're cleaning the contractors out. I think that's what I think that we're sweeping them out of the building. But nonetheless, Block 22 is already hasn't even opened the doors, and it's already a finalist for an award from the University of Economic Development Association. There are four nominees for this award. University of Iowa, University of Central Florida, and the University of West Florida. The total student population of those three institutions is 142,000. And little old Pittsburgh State University is in the mix. That's pretty cool. That's a phenomenal project. I can't wait for you to see it when it all gets done. Saturday kids are moving in, so I'm just going to tell you. So then this was kind of fun. This put us out there. We got to name the baby gorilla at Fort Worth at the Fort Worth Zoo. That was kind of fun. The name turned out to be Gus. The PR folks had a lot of fun with that. And then our students. My gosh, our students have excelled in so many areas. This is the Tekka group. I didn't see Andy Klinky come in, but I saw Brian. Now, this group was the outstanding chapter across the nation in uh, technology education programs. And Enactus, what can you say about Enactus? They just blow me away every time they present. Just a tremendous group of folks, and David is working with them now, David Hogard. Uh, they were, uh, do, always do so well at the regional, of course qualified for nationals, and in one of their projects at the national level was, was deemed uh, one of the best in the nation. So great job by those students. And then locally, you know, the Addy Awards, I think they're going to quit inviting us. Uh, I think we won 27 different awards this year at, at the Addy Awards. That's the uh, PR, you know, advertising area. Uh, we won nine goals, best of show. I mean, just went on and on and on. So congratulations, those students and also the faculty uh, that support them. And then anytime I'm in front of a group, I always have to mention nurses because you never know. You're gonna, you may be on a gurney someday. <laughs> And you just want the nurses to feel good about you. You don't, want them to, you don't want them to pause and think, well, did he fund our building? Did they ever get that you know, toilet repaired or something like that? You want them to feel good about you. Well, this group has just attained some remarkable uh, completion records, retention uh, numbers. They're just amazing. I'd compare any, any in the country, and their pass rates are amazing. And then they don't just sit still. They, they just write all kinds of grants. Over $2 million of grant money have been directed to this program this year. It's absolutely amazing what they're doing over there, and it's worth talking about. And then we had a group of uh, young women win the uh, regional basketball tournament a couple years ago, made it to the Elite Eight, and then not to be sitting on their laurels. You know, the, the track teams have done well, but this is the women's track team that won the outdoor national championship. I think that's prominence. And then, of course, the men, they get motivated after that happens. And they won the national indoor meet, where? In one of the best facilities in the country, the Robert W. Plaster Center. So that's pretty cool. But you know what? We have some athletes in our uh, faculty. There's Kevin, Kevin Brocker. I've called him Bracker for about 10 years, and now he tells me it's Brocker. 
So you all are going to have to work on that. So Kevin ran a 50-mile race. Kevin, what is that about? I don't understand that. And if that wasn't enough, then he ran 100K, which is 62 miles, right, Bobby? Does that sound right? Over 62 miles. That's 12 hours and 9 minutes of running. Some of you are not awake 12 minutes or 12 hours and 9 minutes in a day. He ran that long. Daryl, you can't ride a bike that long. Could you? He said, he said, I can do that. So another thing Kevin did was he did a TEDx uh, speech. It was really good. And, and having TEDx on the campus is another one of those elements of being prominent, being out there. And I liked his. But I'll tell you the one that just blew me away was Harold Washington III. That was an amazing conversation about race and very, very enlightening. And if you haven't seen that, we archive those. I really would encourage you to take a look at that. But that's another, I think, a great example of being out there and being prominent. And the tech folks are probably sitting there thinking, how could he not mention the mud bowl? <laughs> also known as, uh, what is it, uh, SAE Kansas Baja. What an amazing event that is. 1,500, 2,000 folks in town. And, uh, and we, don't, we not only compete in it, we run the whole thing. And then we get all this rain and muck, and it's just it, all, every adversity you can imagine. And Dean Dossey and Trent Lindblom and all the team that you guys put together, it's just it's absolutely amazing. We did it two years in a row. And they're coming back in 2020. So uh, we'll miss them in, in uh, May. Trent will take a little bit of time off, I hope, and relax a little bit. But you just think about these, you just think about these accomplishments. They're not insignificant. They're extremely significant. And to me, then, this, this image that I started with, and it's kind of depressing, really turns into something that looks like this. Hmm. It does, really, don't you think? It kind of makes that change of, wow. And if anything, it, it kind of feel like today you ought to sit up a little bit and think, wow, we did all those things. My colleagues did those things. And I didn't even mention the two students that won Elite 90 awards in athletics. He mentioned those two. And I didn't mention Russ Rosemate's International uh, Casting Institute that he runs uh, every summer. I mean, I didn't mention many more things that have been mentioned. But yet, look what we're getting done. Pretty remarkable. Nobody's just hunkered down. Nobody whines. Well, maybe a little whining here and there. That's okay. That'll make us better. We'll work on the things that we're not getting done. But it's pretty remarkable that we're getting all those things done in such a difficult and challenging environment. So with that, I want to finish with the videos we often do, and we'll get you out of here in just a couple minutes. But I want to tell you a story first about the two people on this video. And this, there is so much in this video, we could chart it and think about it, I think, for an hour, because there's so much there. But this video demonstrates why we do what we do, and I think this is one of those days where you really want to think about that, and you really want to consider that. But the two people in this video are Alex Kuhlman and Bailey Waugh. And Alex Kuhlman, I got to know on, his, on one of his trips to campus when I was sitting at a basketball game and John Pierce came and got me and said, we want you to meet a football recruit, and his mom and dad. And I went into a back office in the weed and I sat down with his parents and him. Nest City, is that right? Alex, where are you from? Nest City, I got it right sat down and, and had a conversation with them about Pittsburgh State University and what life would be like here as a football player, as a student, and why he should come to Pittsburgh State. Well, he came here, got a degree in pre-professional program, and went on to physical therapy school. He met a young woman here named Bailey Waugh, and it turns out Bailey Waugh's mother was a student of mine 20-some years ago. Her name is Carolyn. They're from Edna, Kansas. What do you know about Edna, Kansas? Edna Mattress Factory. <laughs> so poor Carolyn, she had to hear all kinds of silly things when I'm talking about Edna Mattress Factory, you know? But it was a connection. It was a conversation over time, and I remembered her, and then Bailey came to school here. And she played basketball for Lane Lord, played for the gorillas, and she was really good with the three, and man, was she competitive. So this is their story. <music> The thing about Pitt State is that when I came down here, I fell in love with the place, the campus, and the, and the facilities, and you know, I, I had the opportunity to play football and do track, but 
coming back to Pittsburgh uh, after physical therapy school, it was really the people. You know, the, the people is what makes this place. I love the community feel of Pitt State. I love how personal Pitt State is. I feel like everyone I came in contact with at Pitt State um, wanted me to succeed. Those relationships that I had built as a, as a, as a student and, and as an athlete, and, um, and that was a huge part in coming back, was just knowing that I had, I had people to kind of lean on. And, and those seeds, you know, they kind of, this is cheesy, but those seeds kind of turned into like roots. In my experience at Pitt State, it's given me the confidence to find my passion. It guided me to decide what I wanted to do in life. Today I love, love what I do and I love my job. I love going to work every day. And if it weren't for Pitt State, I don't know that I would have found um, my true passion in life. I see a lot of people starting businesses who are Pitt State grads. I think there's a vibe out there for young professionals that's attractive and they have a desire to come back and invest in the community and kind of create this this momentum. It's super exciting to see Alex follow his dreams. When he began PT school he always had a vision of opening up his own practice and seeing it become reality is very exciting for us as a family. You know here at physical therapy it's going to be it's going to be one-on-one -on -one care and it's going to be undivided attention and my wife and I are just I mean, we're just so anxious to be a part of it and, and to contribute. Pittsburgh has a small town feel, so it's exciting to raise our boys in this town. I really like the school system that they'll be going to, and it's a super intimate in environment. It's just exciting to be raising them in this town. I've always been partial to Western Kansas, obviously, growing up, but then coming to Pittsburgh State and seeing some of my friends who grew up here and were raised here, and um, you know, I think that I think it's a great model for for raising children. Wow, that's a great story. Let's have the lights up and Alex and Bailey are here. You guys stand up. That's awesome. Oh, this is something to exercise in. kind of interesting uh, we were whoops we were super proud of them we, we can pull that back up maybe we were super proud of them when they competed for us because they're outstanding student athletes super proud of them in the classroom about the nursing folks would speak to that incredible st students and then leave here and put all this together and come back and be a part of this community and help transform this community that is exactly what we are about. I got goosebumps right now. I've been doing this a long time, but these guys could bring me to tears because this is important stuff. This is good work. This is good for everybody we touch. And I thank all of you for making it happen. Have a great semester. Thank you.